my friends. Welcome to the first video of our other new series. This one is called Sacred Cycles. If you go to my channel, you'll see that we have another one that is a shorter, kind of a quick, and it's a video, and it's called Sacred Minutes. So we have the two new videos coming up each month. And so just to kind of let you know that um, we have decided to do sacred cycles because I think as I go through my own healing journey, it's I'm recognizing that it's all about owning our own gifts and being our own authentic self. And so um, it's looking at well, what do I know and what do I have to offer? And what is my own value? And these are all kinds of questions that I invite everybody to contemplate right now. And so what I am doing today is we are starting each month. The sacred cycles runs from one astrological sign to another. And we'll be talking about the signs and the cycles of the seasons. It's all interwoven. And it's kind of, you know, it's, it's very harmonious with... The integration of all that I am and all that was and so it's bringing it all forward and as you can see in the back here I have my tapestry of the cycles of the year and and right now during Scorpio as we head into Scorpio we're moving into Samhain and so that was a big part of I felt like we really need to um, we don't really need to but I find that it is extremely helpful to, to really align with all that is. So it's the universal energies and the earth energies. And this brings to play of the other piece that I found was really interesting in around this time is part of what inspired me to call this sacred cycles is because I've been really working more closely with the Palladian Earth Astrology and weaving it with Western Astrology, weaving it with the Celtic Wheel, and weaving it with, you know, the Druids and witchcraft and paganism and native Druids, like all of it is being woven together. So when we can do that, then we're integrating all that we are into one star, right? So part of the thing around now is understanding that we are moving into Scorpio, which is very much about death and resurrection. And interestingly, you know, um, I was kind of like, okay, you know, um, I was very much guided not to go external of myself. And that's very much the teachings right now for everyone. I'm finding that we are being nudged and urged to listen to our own wisdom. You know, and one of the things that I find is really amusing is that, um, you know, during Scorpio season, Samhain, and it's about our ancestors, and really connecting with our own ancestor inside of us. And if there's no time and space, I was listening to this thing on my body group the other day, and she was saying about connecting to your 100-year-old self, doing a meditation to go to your own hundred-year-old self. If there's no time and space, then it's like that is an ancestor as well. So we're going to do a little bit of a reading, and we're going to go into a couple of different practices and maybe little rituals that I can suggest for you to do during this time. Now, before I get into the reading, one of the things that I wanted to maybe share is, you know, I'm not really doing energy updates so much anymore. But I do feel that what I would like to kind of acknowledge is the interesting piece of it of how, so here we have, you know, the full moon on Halloween, on Samhain, you know, in the, in the pagan tradition, it's called Samhain. Many of us here in Western world, they will call it Halloween. However, on that same day is the full moon. And the interesting piece is, I'm using these cycles from the Pleiadian Earth Astrology, and it spirals around and it goes through cycles. And there's universal energies that, that interact with Earth energies. 
And so it's kind of like these waves are bringing in these frequencies and how we react to that creates and manifests our world. And on the full moon is the very first, the first one, the first energy of the cycle, which is about initiation and beginnings. Actually, that's the first, that's the day before. So the next day is planting. So it's kind of interesting that we're right aligned. It's, it's fascinating to watch the, the connections between all of them. And so here we are at that time, really kind of like starting this new, which is about death and resurrection, Scorpio. It's, you know, that's, that's shortly before the full moon. And then we get this election coming up on November 3rd, which is when Mercury stations direct. So it's kind of like this, uh, you know, all this collective energy, I feel like that has been subconsciously out there and a lot of fear and a lot of that, you know, it's been a really challenging, you know, this last season in Libra has been, and of course before that, but the lessons have been different, you know, a lot about relationships and a lot about how we are in the world and a lot of like beginning to really release things. And now it almost feels like we're starting to move out of that cocoon. We're starting to actually kind of like see a little bit of a glimpse through this this narrow passageway that we're squeezing through towards the conjunction. So here we are, we've got this full moon, and then we've got this election, you know, and, you know, at the same time, the Mercury is squaring three planets in Capricorn. So that's a lot of challenge. Squaring is like this Lots of challenges coming out around power. It's around Pluto and Capric and Saturn and Jupiter. So, and it's around communication. So that's really interesting to me. And then it's kind of like by mid-November, close to mid-November, Jupiter conjuncts Pluto and Mars goes direct. And I feel like there's going to be a little bit more of a relief. There's going to be, you know, this. if you think about Jupiter, it's expansion and Mars is independence and moving forward. So there's this energy that I feel like is going to start, especially for those that, you know, are have those planets or those signs in their chart. I think that makes a big difference as well. It's going to be amplified. But for everybody, we're all going to feel it. And plus the fact that we're creating new. So it's like this death and resurrection at the same time, even though we don't see anything. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand because we live in this immediate gratification society is that you know when we want to start intentions we think of the new year we think of winter solstice even you know but before that is this void and that's the womb where it sits in the womb where it gestates and it's the in between you know it's kind of like before you get pregnant, you get pregnant, and you, you sit there, and you don't really know, and then it starts moving. So it's kind of like Samhain is, is the, it's not kind of like, Samhain is the pagan, the witch's new year. And the thing is, is from at that time, that's when you really consult with the ancestors. You consult with your higher guides. The veils are thinner. So it's like that is a great time to really start going. And, you know, even around, I think it's, um, what was it? Oh, November 1st, we got daylight savings time. So it's like, great. So we've got that much more darker energy coming. The skies will be darker. The moon will have more prominence in our lives. So that is the divine feminine. And that is who is returning. You know, we've got so much of that patri patriarchal energy and we need that divine feminine, feminine to actually really kind of let it brew and start really getting that power come, coming from within instead of over and outward. It's like we channel it in and we move it through. And this season, Scorpio, is about going to the underworld, is about going into those darker places, is about going beyond those boundaries between life and death and meeting the ancestors and meeting our guides. So it's like a much better, it's a very rich time to do rituals and spells and, and really deep meditations and visualizations. So I'm going to give you, at, after I do this, um, a little bit of a spread because we've decided that on these cycles, 
we'd like to include the tarot as well. And I'm using a different tarot this time, just because it's more of a feminine tarot, but it's also, it's a union really um, of the divine feminine and masculine, because it's also got a lot of really light frequency. And that's what it's all about, is this dance between the divine feminine and masculine. So I'm going to do the tarot, a little bit of a tarot spread to get from our guides a little bit of insight as to, all right, we're moving into Scorpio, we're stepping into Samhain, you know, we're not quite out of this this period of, uh, you know, like that kind of energy. We're still in that tight, dense channel. Uh, the conjunction's not till December. So it's like, what else do we need to know as we begin to step into resurrection? As we are in this place of letting go, you know, I think that's one of the things that I've recognized for myself is, you know, um, as these new things have been coming in, it's like, all right, let go of that old identity. Step into what you know. Step into the part of you that is connected. You know, don't always go out and try to find all the information outside of you. We all have it inside of us, you know, and that's the whole thing about the more connected you are to the cycles, the more you become the cycles. It's not just about being aligned with the cycles. You know, some people say, wow, you know, or I, I meet people that I know are really kind of like listening to their heart because what they're going through really resonates with the season. And that just means that they're becoming the season. They're becoming nature. They're organic. And that's the key. So it's like the more that you align and the more that you understand the energies that are working from above and below and around us, then it's like you recognize you are the great central sun. Your heart is the great central sun. You are the universe. So I feel like now connecting to the cards is a good time. Divination is a great thing to do during Scorpio. And weaving in all the aspects of myself and bringing them in is really what the guides and what my masters are telling me. And I know that it's just a reflection of what they're telling all of us because I am you and you are me. We are one. So there is no separation. And I think that's the thing is we, we need to kind of like break through and bust through, you know, that old recognizing that the roots of a lot of the ways that we think, the roots of our personality and the illusion of duality and polar polarity of this or that, and this is it, and this is truth, and that is truth. It's kind of like recognizing in the fifth dimensional worlds and higher, there is no duality. It's all one. Everything is one. And all this, me speaking here to you, is a projection of myself that is all of that and creating this for you, for the world, for the Gaia. All right, so I'm going to just pull a few cards and we'll just see what kind of insights that we can get from this Tarot of Transformation deck. I'm just going to do a three card spread because I really enjoy uh, the three cards, because I find that it really kind of goes mind, body, spirit, and the triangle. Well, you see, you know, the essence of each of the elements as a triangle, as a symbol. Trinity, and there's so many, so many descriptions for the triangle. Okay. All right. So that's interesting. So... I'm going to just show you each card one at a time, and these are ones that I don't really use very often. So, and I think that I was urged to do that because it's very much about intuition rather than going to the book, because right now it's about trusting ourselves and following that. That's the key. And that's all of the whole cycle. As you move through the cycle, how you are at each energetic frequency determines how the next frequency will unfold. You know, it all ripples out. So here we've got the Two of Swords, which is really interesting to me because it's very much about duality. And that's actually, you know, it's funny because that's the energy of today is the pulse of duality. I think that's what it's called. But 
That's the essence that I got out of it. And recognizing I've been having a couple, a tough couple days and there's been some challenges and it's like, oh, but wait, we're in a two. And two is this energy where, you know, the old and the new, it's like stretching. You know, you're stretching an elastic, or you're stretching something. Sometimes we have a fear that we're going to break or we're going to snap. And I think that we've been conditioned. Our ego is like, oh my God, wait, stop, go back, go back, go back to that old identity, go back to what was, because this is going to take you to like unknown territories. And that's exactly where we want to go. It's exactly where we want to go. But it's about being with it. And in this deck, they call it creative differences. And so it's the merging of the differences. It's the merging of the polarities and recognizing. And, you know, this, you know, in itself, the hoops overlap and they join. And, you know, the vesica Pisces, you know, where it goes and that's inside of us. And so it's kind of like the, the interaction and the integration of the two. And as the two interact, then what they do is it goes off to the three, which is about abundance and manifestation. The other thing that's really interesting is that um, during Scorpio, every, every sign is associated with the tarot. And during Scorpio season, it's five, six, and seven of cups. You know, and so five is that time where it's like we choose. You know, that's the first decade. That's before Samhain, you know. And so it's this energy of... Um, almost like, you know, it's a, someone standing there with grief and disappointment. And, and do you focus on the disappointments or do you allow those things to fall away? Because that's very much what death is, right? Is we've got to allow ourselves to grieve as well. Because there are things that are passing over that are no longer useful for us. You know, and we have, we've been meeting a lot of death in the world lately and so we have to change our relationship with death and understand it's not a linear thing it spirals and cycles and you know it just continues it if you look at the universe in all galaxies you know it's a spiral energy and flowers it's spiral everything is spiral you know you look at that sacred geometry that's where it begins so when we then move into the second decan we've got six of cups you know, and so here we are, we're moving a little bit further around when I say Halloween and a little bit further than that, then it starts to get into this place of, you know, you're feeling good and you're starting to to feel the relationships and the giving and receiving, the balance of giving and receiving, you know, and again, so it's like that union, you know, because six is about love, you know, and, and then we kind of move the later part is seven of cups. And that's the thing, it's like we need to decide. You know, sometimes it's, it is moment to moment choices. You know, do we want to continue to take this forth? Are we ready to keep working at developing this next thing? So this is interesting to me that we've got the six of swords in the center because six of swords is very much, um, you know, I said six of cups for Scorpio. And Six of Swords, you know, it's kind of like that. Here it says structure for the journey. So you've got structures of the journey. And so it's kind of like you're in the boat and you're starting to travel from old to new is the Rider Waite Tarot. And in here she's looking forward at the light and following the light. And she's making sure that she's balanced. And, and is she ready, you know? And in this picture, she's following this path, but there are sacred geometric patterns. So it's kind of like following that on which unfolds. Instead of the mind, the mind is there to serve us. We're not there to serve the mind. And Six of Swords is one of the cards that actually really assists us as we move through in the Egyptian you know, um, in the talk theory, it talks about the Bardo states. And Six of Swords is one of those cards that really helps us when we start going into that place. Um, and so it's kind of like, all right, we need to just kind of step away. And Scorpio is very much about that stillness and silence. You know, and in my video um, of the Sacred Minutes, I talked about uh, morning practice and how important it is to take those moments to connect to spirit. Because then you're following that light that is organic, 
you're following that light that comes through, you know, the, the one that's calling us, that is deep within our hearts. Which, the light within, the light without, right? And I said, you know, as I said before, the great central sun is in here. So, so what's interesting then is, you know, the third card is transcending judgment. So in this one, it's called compassion. And, and I like that. It's, you know, when in the Rider Waite, this one is the judgment card. And, and I think compassion and transcending judgment. So let's think about that. I talked about how mid-November, you know, that I felt like things were going to start to ease up a little bit for us. And I think the key to that is that we do come from the heart and that we do more so come from a place of compassion, of recognizing, you know, that that person that's out there it's not out there. That person is your teacher. So wherever you have, and I was saying to somebody who was doing a reading today, and I said, you know, it's kind of like my very first teacher I ever had. She had my, put my arms out, and she said to me, all right, now, if ever there's anything that pulls you off your center, that thing that pulls you is your teacher. So see it as what it's teaching you about what you need to embody to be more whole because everybody that's on this planet is an aspect of the universe we are so it's like this big universal body and we are the cells within that body and we all need to work together so the only way to work together is to have compassion and understanding not an easy thing we'd rather judge it's so much easier but that judgment is rooted in a very linear patriarchal polarity construct. It's not about fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, up to twelfth dimension. It's not going to help us activate our DNA. So to me that really makes sense. So it's it's recognizing the differences, being at peace with them, allowing the creative tension to be there, creating, you know, how can you learn to be with the different things that rise as you move through change. We've been very conditioned to be afraid of change. We've been very conditioned to avoid change, you know, because it creates these feelings that we want to get rid of. But Scorpio says, be, go in, dive deep. And so with that, what I would invite you to do is with these, with these teachings from the tarot and what the archetypes are telling us is that perhaps then you could, you could take this and do some writing. And, and think about what is it that, what is that creative tension for me? What is it that I am moving out of and resurrecting, you know? Because we are at that cusp, you know? We're not at the time to actually manifest and give birth. And, and you know, December 21st is when the sun again begins its transition. You'll see on here that between Samhain and the Yule, this is like the raven. You know, the messenger. There are the messengers between the worlds, between the old, when there was death, and when new life begins to rise. So the new life begins to rise. But before that, and that's the whole thing about the Pleiadian astrology, they use the number 13, which is a time of integration, bringing back the energy of number 13. So then what I would do is write about that. Use that time to write. Do divination. You know, do a ritual where maybe you burn, you know, burn that, which you have your cauldron or your bowl or whatever it is. It could can, it can be a clay pot. Burn that and, and give it, give it away. Do a little bit of ceremony of saying, you know, hey, wait a minute. If there's some things that I have difficulty with letting go, grab them in for a cup of tea and sit with them and, and, and talk to them and thank them for all the gifts that they gave you. You know, there was a reason that my ego kept me so safe. There was a reason that my ego kept me invisible. There was a reason that it made me kind of keep my walls up, you know? I needed to keep myself safe. You know, I wasn't ready. There was too many things that were on fire inside of me and drowning, you know? So they served you for a reason. So let them go with compassion and with grace, you know? Could be people. You know, we've moved through Libra recently, and there's been a lot of stuff about relationships come up. 
You know, maybe there's people that you need to say goodbye to, literally as well as figuratively. You know, maybe you need to just cut some cords and let them go. Or, you know, during this pandemic, we are going through a lot of loss. So shift your relationship with death and understand it as a spiral. It's a spiral and we move from one dimension to another and sometimes we move out of this dimension, you know, and, and for different reasons. So the other thing that I would encourage you to do is to do, you could even maybe do a little bit of a house cleansing, you know, clear your home out, you know, where uh, some of friends and I are making a besom and, uh, you know, so that we can clear and clean out all the old stuff in our homes and in our lives to create room for the new. So this is the time to do that. Get yourself ready. You know, one of the other things that I, has, I got from some dear friends of mine from Obscura Bazaar on Ottawa Street, she makes it herself with some Florida water. And so it's here you can use that if you can't use, like, smudge or anything. And we'll, we'll do a short video on, on house cleansings. And we'll, we'll show you a little bit more about how to do that. Because doing a cleansing and a blessing and using sound and using out different elements is really powerful. And so these kind of things are really very, very powerful. You know, and the last thing that I would say uh, about practices is because this is a time to really connect with ancestors, maybe create an ancestor altar. You know, maybe do a little bit of a shrine, create somewhere to really honor all those that have brought you to this place. And like I said, you could do that 100-year-old meditation with yourself, you know. I did that this morning again, and it was just like, it's pretty fascinating to see your 100-year-old self talking to you. And you realize you are the influencer of what that ancestor will live like because they will be the ancestors for the future generations. They will be the elders, you know? So it's really, really thinking about that. What are you bringing forward as you even move into that place of being an elder and ancestor, you know? Creating a little bit of an altar for all that in, in this gratitude and respect, you know? And then it feels like you're really creating this strong structure this strong balance, this strong foundation before you end up moving into that new place. Now is the time to go within. Now is the time to meet the dark. Now is the time to just really be and trust and know that this is just part of the cycle and it will spiral into something new. But you are the one that determines what that's going to look like because we are the divine human incarnate creator beings all right my friends if you found this helpful please ensure that you subscribe you can push the notification bell comment if you have any questions reach out if you do um, by all means if you have any questions about rituals or spells please feel free to ask and to message me um, my website will be linked below and um, I wish you much love and light during this next cycle of our journey. Blessed be.